This is the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin, a.k.a. Q Gauze No Days Off. From on the field and off the field, NFL player and entrepreneur. Motivating you to be the best you can be and getting you out of your comfort zone. Sharing with you travel, sports, and entrepreneurial tips with amazing guests on the show. Now, get ready for your life to change with the Life Journey Podcast and your host, Quentin Gauze. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Journey Podcast. Once again, this is season three. Um, This is your host, Quentin Gauze. We don't have Chastity as the co-host on the day, but we have a special guest. Uh, she's a Brooklyn, New York native. Um, recently, well, actually, no, been living Brooklyn, New York native, has been living in Atlanta for the past six years, has two daughters. She's a single mom and uh, has a self-published, uh, uh, she's a self-published author of four books and her first audio book. And uh, Tamika has been through many trials and tribulations in her life, which some includes the loss of her mom, sister, grandmother, and first and second daughters, fathers, and also in four car accidents. Um, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the, uh, the other portions of it is like Tamika has appeared on several televi- uh, television uh, shows, uh, podcasts, uh, blog talk, radios, and Tamika has read her children books in several libraries, um, Atlanta children's shelters, daycare centers, in Georgia, New York City. Tamika uh, Reed is on the show as a guest today. Tamika, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for having me. Um, so your story, wow, like that, that uh, the bio, that's, that's a deep bio. That's a deep bio. Um, yeah. Before we get into, into all that, let's first talk mm-hmm. about growing up um, in Brooklyn, New York and your childhood. How was all that? Growing up in Brooklyn was great. You know, it's, of course, it's a huge difference from now. Um, Being the oldest, uh, it was just, it was just amazing. You know, we would be able to be outside more. Now, you know, kids can't go outside and play like they would normally do. Mm -hmm. And so um, growing up, I didn't uh, have my um, biological father. He's been in jail for 32 years of my life. So I was blessed to have my stepfather. And um, so it was amazing. Um, I went through a lot. I've been through so much. And so I love sharing my story with others to inspire, motivate, and encourage them to never give up. Mm -hmm. Because at a young age, I lost my sister. And I was devastated when I lost her. And so, of course, it took a toll on me, but I couldn't be selfish because she was sick. She was very, very sick. And so I had to, you know, deal with that. And um, of course I went through some things with my mom. She and I, we did not have a good relationship, but of course, before she ended up passing away in 2004, we did uh, rekindle our relationship. We became like best friends. So that was amazing, you know, to be able to um, uh, experience that. But um, I uh, went through some things in my household, which caused me to move out to go stay with my aunt. And uh, staying with my aunt, it was a big change for me. I felt like life was so much better for me after going through so much staying with my mom. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that my mom was a bad mom. She was a good mom. And I don't regret anything that I've gone through being there because it made me who I am today. And so... um, After leaving my mom's and staying with my aunt, I ended up meeting my first daughter's father. And so being with him, I felt like I didn't have a worry in the world. I felt safe. I felt secure. I felt like there wasn't anybody that can touch me, do any harm to me or whatnot. And so when I lost him in 2003, I felt like my life was over. I felt like there wasn't anybody that can you know, keep me safe anymore, you know? And so um, losing him wasn't easy. I had to identify his body in my stairwell in a pool of blood. Two weeks prior, we were robbed at gunpoint. So it was a lot, it was a lot. And although that I had my daughter at the time, I was giving up. I didn't wanna be here anymore. I didn't wanna eat, sleep. I I didn't wanna do anything 
But because I had my mother at the time, she instilled in me that I needed to be strong for my daughter because no one was going to take care of her or love her the way that her mother can. And then now that her father is gone, I had to do what I had to do to get myself together and say, hey, listen, you need to get it together, go back to work, eat and do what you need to do to take care of your child because she needs you. And so I'm glad that I stepped out of that zone and got myself together. And then a year later, of course, um, like I said earlier, I lost my mom a year later. Um, that was a lot, you know, and being the oldest, I had to be strong for my sisters and brothers. So that it, it wasn't easy losing my mother. Then I decided to give love another chance. I ended up losing my second daughter's father. And um, I tell you, when I got the phone call that he didn't make it, I almost crashed my vehicle because I blacked out. Like, God, not again, you know, not again. But my youngest daughter, she screamed so loud, it brought me back to reality before I can do any harm to any of us. And I always tell people that was nobody but God saving us that day. And I believe that wholeheartedly because she screamed so loud. It just uh, brought me back. And so um, after that loss, you know, I was dealing with a lot of struggles and setbacks and, um, end up losing my grandmother in 2014. And she and I were very close. So dealing with the loss of loved ones has not been easy for me, but I am so glad that I'm here still standing. And I realized that I needed to turn my story into a purpose so I can help others. I wanna be a motivation and inspiration to let people know like, hey, listen, yes, I went through these things, the struggles, the setbacks, being a single mom, dealing with these losses. And um, I've dealt with many loss, but the ones that I named are the ones that pushed me to the point to where I was like, oh, I cannot do this. I can't mm -hmm. take it, you know, but um, I just want to encourage people. I want my story to be a blessing to others right. to let them know, do not give up because it will get better. It does get better. Even, you know, when my grandmother passed away, I was like, I need to get out of here. I need to go. I need to move. And so I end up moving to Georgia. When I moved here, things wasn't going good at first and uh, things got so much better, thank God. And so um, ended up being in four car accidents. I just was like, God, what are you doing to me? What are you doing? I'm Relax. going through so much and I'm just tired, you know? And uh, the third car accident that I had um, scared me. It's like my life flashed before my eyes because Oh my gosh, she was driving up the wrong way. Oh. And it sort of like was head on, but thank God I was paying attention. I was able to swerve to the left. So she still hit my car. My car was totaled and everything, but you know what? I'm here, I'm still standing, I'm alive. I am grateful for that. And I'm here just to share my story with others to let them know, yes, I went through all of these things, but I'm still standing. And so no matter what you go through, you can be here and still stand too. So I have four books out through out of all of my pain, I turned it into a purpose mm. so I can inspire, like I said. Um, my first book is, uh, titled Nicole and the Shining Star. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that book, like I said earlier in the show, uh, because of the losses. Right. And I wrote that book to help children cope with their loss because it's not easy. It's, it's really not easy. You know, um, I never imagined becoming an author. This was never my plan. So being on your show today, <laughs> I thank you, but it was never my plan to do any of this. I always say that this was God's plan for my life. And so I'm happy to be in this position because I'm able to be a blessing to others. So it's amazing. Um, like I said, I never imagined writing a book. I had people telling me your story needs to be told, share your story, share your story. I never wanted to, but then, like I said, I realized that my story needed to be told to help others. Yeah. And that's what I want to do. I want to be a blessing to help others. So upon writing my um, memoir, <laughs> I pushed my memoir to the side and started writing my children's story. Okay. Now, I didn't imagine writing a children's book. I used to watch my daughter run to the window and she used to say, mommy, daddy, daddy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's deceased. And he used to scare me. But after she would do that, I would go to the window and look up and I'll see all of these stars. And so the thought of a children's story about stars 
popped into my head. It's like it was already there. I just needed to let it out. And so, like I said, I was writing my memoir, I pushed the memoir to the side and started writing a children's story called My Daughter's in the Room. And I read the, the story to them. They seemed interested. So I was like, oh, I'm going to turn this into a children's book. And so I did. I turned it into a children's book. So that book is to help a child cope with the loss of a loved one. And uh, my second book, which is uh, my memoir, Beyond the Tears I've Cried, Here I Am Still Standing, that book is to inspire, encourage, empower, and motivate others to never give up. So when you listen to my story, you read my story, you see that I went through all of these things and I'm here, I'm still standing, and you can be here too. My third book is uh, titled Inspire Your Way Through the Storm. That book is a guidebook to encourage you through the storms that you go through in life. So it's a bunch of poems and quotes that I wrote. Um, that book came to birth because I, one day I was sitting on a bench and um, I was thinking about my mom and uh, I was going, like I said, I was going through so much at the time I was still in New York. And um, that was the first time I took my daughters to that park. And we lived there for like seven years in that apartment. And uh, I heard her voice say, it's going to be okay. Mm. It's going to be okay. And so I came up with uh, some words. I took it to social media. People started liking it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to turn this into a quote, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to put TR, which is my initials, behind mm -hmm. the quote to let people know that it came from me. And so that's what I did. And uh, that's how that uh, third book came about. And so I just want people to be inspired, to stay strong and, and hold on and don't give up. Right. And so <laughs> my fourth book, which I just recently came out with uh, in December last month, that book is to help a child learn their main colors. And okay. the title of that book is Susie Sings, This is the Color. And so I also came out, let me not forget my first audio book. <laughs> okay. My first audio book to inspire your way through the storm. That book is um, that audio book is out as well. These are the things that I never imagined doing. So you never know what plans God has for you. You never know what's down the line on your journey. You just got to keep on going to find out what's behind those doors. And you, you just got to keep on pushing. You, you got know. to. You got to. Yes. You're right. And that's the, the mentality you got to have. Like, I mean, that's why I love Absolutely. this show. Absolutely. That's why I love this show. Like, now, you, you did some extra work uh, at Tyler Perry Films. Um, nobody's yes. a fool. So tell, tell me a little bit about that. So that was unexpectedly, like <laughs> I didn't imagine. <laughs> you got to okay. film, that's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> so what happened was, um, I kept saying that I want Tyler Perry to, to turn my book into a movie. Okay. I used to drive for Lyft and I've had so many people tell me, you need to take this book to Tyler Perry. Stop playing, girl. Stop playing. Go take this book to Tyler Perry. He will love, this will be a good Tyler Perry movie. And I used to be hyped over that. Hearing so many people say that to me. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go past there and see if I can drop this book off. So I ended up calling when I got there. I called just to see, you know, you know what, who was I gonna, was able to talk to. And so um, I called and they gave me the address and everything to mail the book. Okay. And so there was options to see, um, you know, about casting. So I was like, hmm, let me see what they're casting for. And so I didn't think that someone was going to answer the phone in that department. But a lady answered mm -hmm. and uh, she told me what was what uh, scenes that they had, which was a oh, park wow. scene and an <laughs> escape scene. Okay. And I was like, yes, just off the back like that. Okay. I was like, hmm. So she was like, well, if you have skates, I can put you down for the uh, the skating scene. And I was like, what? She was like, yes, I'll put you down. You got skates? <laughs> I didn't have skates at all. <laughs> and I told her, I said, yes, I do have skates. And what I did was um, she put me down, booked me and everything. I went right to Target and got me some skates. <laughs> and only wore those skates one time. I gave it to my daughter. But 
it was amazing to be on a set with Tyler Perry. Of course, you couldn't talk to him. And I was upset for a moment about that because I said, dang, I can't even walk up to him and, you know, try to talk to him or anything. And before set was over, he was already gone. And I was yeah, like, yeah, oh that. my gosh. <laughs> so yeah. I said, it was great to have that experience. Um, set was great. Um, it was amazing. So that just opened the door for me to want to do more. But I said, I can't do do that here in Georgia because I need that. Um, I want, I would like for my daughters to be around people that I know gotcha. and that I can trust in case I'm on set for all of these hours and I can't get to my phone. I would like for them to be around people because we're here in Georgia by ourselves, you know? So, um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was amazing. It, it really was amazing being on set yeah. that I never imagined it. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of things hmm? no no that no that movie was that uh so like it the, was nobody's fools nobody's fool okay i got you yes yes but i didn't see myself because i was looking i was I like well where am i at but that was a a quick part gotcha. you know and so i was like dang but it's okay i, I got paid for it so it's it's mm -hmm. all good mm -hmm. <laughs> It's, it's all good, good but um yeah. it was amazing i would love to do it again mm -hmm. that's awesome now what is your favorite new york hometown restaurant and a restaurant oh my gosh i'm i'm a soul food type of person mm. so mm. i go to like the the corner spots that's local and yes it's new york food hands down is amazing all around the board mm -hmm. and i miss it so much <laughs> uh, no, I, I, so like I have a favorite couple of spots it's just it's amazing it's it's, it's amazing and I, I miss it i miss the chinese food i miss the pizza <laughs> i miss the soul food i miss it all yes now do you i know, miss it all now you're from brooklyn so you know about that mumbo sauce yes mumbo sauce i used to put that on my chicken and fries <laughs> Okay, I had to make sure. I was like, it was, I went over there and uh, I tried that mumbo. My mom's from Brooklyn and my ex girlfriend's from Brooklyn, so we always oh, got okay. mumbo sauce. So it was like yes. at the Chinese spots, put on your chicken. You know, it was yes. always mumbo <laughs> sauce everywhere. So I was making sure. So that's funny. Now nah, that's good. Um, yes, that's awesome. I miss it. Uh, I yeah. miss it. New York, <laughs> now Atlanta-based restaurant. You know what? I have not gone to any. Uh, good restaurants as of yet out here mm -hmm. um i'm so new york so you. You i'm just me. like it's it's different you know, know the places that i have gone to is different mm -hmm. so yes no, but hopefully before i leave here <laughs> maybe i get to experience but with all of this going on this pandemic and covid and stuff i'm just like I, I don't want to go anywhere out to eat. <laughs> right. Right now it's just like it's crazy. It's crazy. Right yes, now. it yeah. is. It is. I'm like, I'd rather just cook my food home, make sure me and my daughters are safe. You know, so yes. Got you. No, that's that's awesome though. Um, so let's move on to the next portion of the next question. So the next question to me to you is um what can so you you've been through those experiences like yes. That's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, I'm just, just just listening to you and like even what I read. Like that's a lot of experiences to go through, and you're still standing strong. There's a lot of people that yes. would give up on life. Be real, like yes. give up on life, depression and stuff like that when they've gone through yes. lost so many different people. Um, yes. But you stand strong to this day. Um, yes. People got a chance to read your story. So I yes. guess my question to you is like, what are the core things inside of you that have helped? keep obviously like the lord the lord almighty but like what has kept you grounded strong through all those trials my daughters my daughters because with their dads not being here i know that i have to be strong for them i know because they need me and then now i know that this my story everything that i've gone through is it's bigger than me mm. it's bigger than me because I'm able to use it as a testimony to help others. 
Because a lot of times when people see that they are not alone, there's someone else that went through what they're going through, they can be able to look at that person's story and see, hey, she made it. She's here. Mm -hmm. She's still standing. So I can get through it too. So yes, that's that's what motivates me to keep on pushing. Okay. My daughters and knowing that my story is bigger than me. It's right. purpose. Purpose, right? Yes. Purposeful. Yes. And and just and just hearing you know just kind of diving a little, a little deeper from what you what you said. Um, the situ situation of losing both um, fathers. Um, yes. That like having that happen the second time. What went mm -hmm. through your mind? What went through your mind when that happened? You know, I just thought that um, I had like, a, I, I don't believe in voodoo and bad luck and stuff like that. At first, I just thought that it was something that I needed to go through. Mm -hmm. And I questioned God, of course, why is this happening to me? What am I doing wrong? You know, I questioned myself and I just thought like, hey, um, maybe it's not meant for me to be with anyone, you know? And so even now um, in my life, I'm just like, I don't wanna be with anyone because I'm afraid. Like that's the only thing that I fear of because I don't, want to experience it happening to me again mm. you know mm. so um yeah it's it's not easy dealing with that part in my life but of course because i believe in the most high i know that all things work out for our good yes and um we just got to keep on pushing keep on going and have faith that all is well and right. that he has us you know so yeah but it's not it's it's not easy at all losing you know people that you love so daily, and um, yeah. But I I look at my daughters every day, and I'm like you know what I still have them, and they're still in my heart. You know they're not here in the physical form, but they are still with me. Right. You know. So yes. No, no thank yes. you for explaining that. I know because yeah, there's a lot of people that are listening that have been through a lot that have commented mm -hmm. um, through the podcast and stuff. And um, yes, now your story is inspirational for sure. Your story is inspirational and like helping Thank fight you. through those barriers. Um, yes. Because yeah, everybody, everybody goes through something and like, of course, and in like sharing your story, being, being able to like, uh, it resonates with a lot of people uh, for yes. sure. So thank you for being vulnerable and open to first create books, have an audio book and be able to share your stories and be able to help, you know, um, young children as well. Um, yes. Be able to, <laughs> you know, just open their minds up a bit. So that's, uh, thanks for doing that. Cause a lot of people don't share their story. A lot yeah. of people just keep it to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think our short stories should always be shared. Always should be shared. Um, to help Absolutely. Them Absolutely. Cause we, we go through so much, you know and you never know how your story can help others. Mm. And that's another thing. I never knew how my how much my story can help someone until I started driving for Lyft. Mm. Oh my gosh. I've had so many passengers sit in my backseat crying. And I used to keep napkins back there because I'm like, <laughs> you kept the napkins. I said, oh my gosh, yes. I kept napkins mm. back there because at first I would say, I'm not sharing my story for you to feel sorry for me, right, right. you know? I don't want you to feel sorry for me, right? But kind of find out it was because they can relate. They can relate to the story. And so listening to people's stories, I've had passengers share stories with me that they hadn't even shared with anyone. Mm. And they would tell me that. So Drive and Lift was like my own little ministry, you know, being able to listen, give encouragement, give them motivation. And it amazed me. And I was so happy to hear the words I'm so happy I, I drove with you. I'm so happy I met you today. You made my day hearing all of these things. And I'm like, wow, this is just so amazing, you know? And so you just never know how much your story can help someone else because a lot of people don't share their stories. You don't know what a person is going through. And I've had passengers, like I said, they can be in a car just listening. They don't look like nothing is wrong. But the minute you start getting into conversation, and they start crying, it's like, wow. But you wouldn't have never thought that that person was going through something. So you never know what a person is going through. That's why you should always be kind 
that's that's number one you know always be kind and be open you know because you just you never know what a person is battling they can look good on the outside but on the inside they are hurting they are hurting right so yeah you sh- i think anybody should always share their story you know whatever experience you may go through because you just never know how it can help someone else that is true yes well thank yes. you so much for like sharing um and being open yes. about your story and like just you know thank letting you. people know like so I, I guess one big thing that we like to do at the end of the show is always leave a quote and okay What's a quote you can leave for everyone listening that can help impact them for the rest of their lives? I would say, because I have over 200 quotes, <laughs> but I believe that this one would um, be helpful right now. Uh, and it is, the pain you had to endure can't compare to the joy that's coming. So mm. yes, mm. yes. Say it one more time, <laughs> say it one more time for him. <laughs> the pain you had to endure can't compare to the joy that's coming. <laughs> mm, thank yes. you for sharing that. I know that everyone loves, loves the quotes at the My end pleasure. of the show. But uh, yes. definitely can apply <laughs> apply that to their lives. Uh, Absolutely. So, um, so everyone, Tamika Reed, uh, author, um, movie extra, I would say actress <laughs> as well too, uh, movie extra, um, how she has her book. Yes plug your books plug everything right now definitely let everyone know where to find you um make sure yeah we'll make sure uh, can find a way to reach out or or help you you know purchase your stuff yes so i am on facebook as author tamika reed i am on instagram as author underscore tamika underscore read um i do have an author's page on amazon so if you just put in tamika reed t-o-m-i-k-a last name reed r-e-i-d All my books will come up. My author's page will come up. It'll give you my bio and all of the other information to connect with me and um, to purchase my books. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Everyone, make sure to go purchase her books um, and support. Tamika, thank you so much for being on the show today. Like, we really appreciate you being on. Uh, Definitely we'll have you you back on. No problem. We'll have you back on at some point again, for sure. To keep your story and keep updated on the progress and everything. So, um, yes. Anything else? Any last words before we go? I just want to say to the listeners to stay strong and hold on and do not give up because you got this. You will make it through. It will get better. Just keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Tamika, thank you That's so right. much. And You're welcome. Everyone, tune in next time.